Welcome to Electron Line. One of the main portions of the Kalman filter is, of course, the Kalman gain. And understanding the Kalman gain better will help us understand Kalman filtering better. So the Kalman gain is what's used to determine how much of the new measurements to use to update the new estimate. And so what goes into the Kalman gain is the error in the estimate and the error in the data that we're reading, the observation of the data that we took. And so the Kalman gain is equal to the ratio of the error in the estimate. And notice what I'm doing here is I'm calling the Kalman gain Kg, the error in the estimate E sub EST, and the error in the measurement E sub MEA. So the Kalman gain is equal to the ratio of the error in the estimate divided by the sum of the error in the estimate plus the error in the measurement. And the number you get will be somewhere between 0 and 1. How is then the Kalman gain used? Well, if we then say that the current estimate is written as EST sub T, and the previous estimate is written as EST sub T minus 1, so that's the estimate, current estimate, estimate, the previous estimate, T minus 1, and measurement, we abbreviate MEA. So the new estimate, or the current estimate, I should say, is equal to the previous estimate plus the Kalman gain, that would be the number between 0 and 1 that we got from here, times the difference between the new measurement and the previous estimate. So the difference between the new measurement and the previous estimate, whatever that number is, then gets multiplied times the Kalman gain and gets added to the previous estimate to come up with the current estimate. Now, how does the Kalman gain play a role in all this? Well, if the Kalman gain is high, is large, close to number one, close to one I should say, that means that the measurements we're getting are fairly accurate and the estimates are unstable. The uncertainty or the error in the estimates are unstable, they're large, and the measurements are accurate and the common gain will be large. So take a look over here. So that means if the common gain is large, so that means that this ratio here will be close to one, which means that the error in the measurement will be very small, therefore measurements are accurate, and so you'll get basically the ratio of the error estimate divided by error estimate, which is close to 1 if the error in the measurement is very small. So if the error of the measurement is very small, we do want to contribute much of the uh, update to the estimate by the measurement that we took. So then we go over here, so we want this difference to be important, so this difference will then get multiplied by a large number, so we take a big portion of the delta to update the estimate. But if the, if the Kalman gain is very small, which means that the error in the measurement is large relative to the error in the estimate, so that you then say, well, since the, since the measurement has a large error in it, I don't want to put too much weight into that. That's why we call it Kalman gain or the weight. So if Kalman gain is a small number, close to zero, that means that the estimates are becoming stable. We want to put more weight in the current and the previous estimate to update the current estimate. And we want to put less weight in the measured value. So the difference between the new measured value and the previous estimate, we want to just take a very small portion of that and add that to the previous estimate to come up with the current estimate. We don't want the new measurement to throw off the filtering too much because we don't put a lot of value into it because we do expect if the Kalman gain is, is, is small, we expect the measurements to be reasonably in, inaccurate and we expect the estimates to be stable. So we don't want the new measurements to upset our estimates. We just want to make small corrections at that point with new measured values because we're beginning to get stable. Over time, typically, the size of the Kalman gain will get smaller and smaller and smaller, which means that we're getting closer and closer and closer to the true value, that the estimates are becoming closer to the true value, and that we don't want to get upset by measured values, which could be very erratic, that could have a large uncertainty in them, so we just want to take small portions of the delta to update the, the estimates. And so that's how we use the Kalman gain. The Kalman gain is simply used to either take a lot of the difference into account or just a small amount of difference into account depending upon how the Kalman gain is zeroing in or I should say the Kalman filter is zeroing in to the true value either for the measurement that we're trying to read or for the estimate of position and velocity of satellites, planes and so forth that we're trying to measure. 
So that's what the gain does for us, and that's why the common filter is such a good process because it uses the common gain to figure out how much of the delta between the measured value and the estimates we're going to use to update the previous value of the estimate to give us a new value for the estimate. That's what we mean by the common gain.